I've installed a lot of Bilstein shocks over the years and a lot of different models. But uh, this one right here is a real challenge. This 380SL has some things that make this very challenging. And yesterday, when I was trying to get down in here to tighten these nuts, now that's a locking nut, but you also have to hold on to the end of the shaft of the shock absorber or it just spins. So if I get a wrench in there, even if it's angled like this, and start turning it, the shock just spins and spins and spins. So I'm sitting here looking at this. I'm thinking, ah, this is going to need a new tool, a special tool. And what's interesting is this is a tool I've been dreaming about or thinking about for the last almost 20 years since I started installing these shock absorbers. You know, if there was a tool where a shaft would go down and grab the top and then you put the socket over the top and turn it and just near, 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 just tighten it right down, you're done. You're done in a few minutes rather than trying to hold the top of the shock with some vice grips and trying to get some sort of ratcheting box in here. And you might even try a crow's foot sometimes but the crow's foot doesn't have enough torque. Uh, have any of you been there? <laughs> Are any of you laughing <laughs> if you've put in a number of Bilstein shocks over the years? So this is kind of interesting. You know, we did do this tool here, a custom tool with a notch out so you can come in and hold on. But look at this. There's so much interference, both on the driver's side and the passenger side over there, that I can't even get this wrench in here to hold the top of the shock. I can move it around to this position, but once this wrench is in position to hold the top of the shock with that notch, I can't get anything underneath it. You know, I can't go through here, I can't go through here, and the only way I can get it is with a socket. But then I can't get on that shaft. Of course, now you can see why I used an impact to take these nuts off. But to put them back on, you don't want to use an impact. You don't want to spin that shaft. It's a little hard on the seals on your new shock absorbers. So just wait until you see what we came up with. In one hour last night, we created another new tool. Hey, thanks, Jerry. You just keep giving and giving. So for those of you not familiar with this challenge, I thought I'd bring you over to the bench and show you one of the new rear shocks and explain the problem here. Okay, there is your shaft for the shock absorber comes up through the body, and this is where you put the rubber bushings and then almost all the new shocks now just use one locking nut so to get the nut started isn't a problem you know you can run it in like this until you get about that location and then that's when the nylon starts to lock on the threads so if you get where to get a ratcheting box wrench and start turning this see the shaft moving the shaft's moving so the shock absorber manufacturer provided this little top flat spot so you could get a wrench on it. In the past, you know, I'd get a hold of that with some pliers and some vice grips, and that's fine if you've got a lot of room to work. So we came up with this wrench a couple years ago, notched out a 17 millimeter, which would allow you to come in and, and hold on to that. See that? And then you could put the ratcheting box on first and then take the notch wrench and get a hold of the top of the, the shock. Now see, I can turn the nut and hold it. So the shaft of the shock absorber is not spinning. So the combination of this wrench here and a ratcheting box wrench works pretty well in most cases until you run into a situation like you see on that SL. And there's no way I'm gonna get those wrenches in there. Even if I were to get a crow's foot in here, tried to get some vice grips on there and it would snap off because once again as you start to tighten this down you, there's considerable torque to it. So the tool I had been dreaming about for let's say 18 years. The year is 2002 <laughs> and I'm thinking boy just think if I could get a rod that would go down here and just connect to that flat spot on the top of the shaft and then slide a socket right over the top and I could hold the rod and turn the socket, and in just a few minutes I could spin this in and tighten it up. Well, guess what? Dreams do come true. <laughs> I should mention that I believe one of the reasons it's more difficult to put these shocks on now than it was originally is they did away with these twin nuts. Now the twin nuts can go down all the way by hand. 
you can take them all the way down to the bottom and spin them all the way off once you loosen them up, except if someone's using an impact and damage the threads. But now they just supply one nut. It's a nylock nut, has a nylon ring there that locks down on the threads. So when it goes in about this far, it starts binding up on that nylon. So you have to tighten this all the way down here to the bottom. And those are very fine threads. So if you're working with an open end wrench going like this, you know, it just takes forever. So that was another motivating factor. Now we have to deal with these nylock nuts. So I went to work and here is what we came up with. First off, here's the rod that I dreamed about. Now this rod is a standalone tool. It can be used without the next part of the tool I'm going to show you. I want to make sure you understand that. If you don't have clearance problems and all you have to do is get a hold of this, you can use this right here. See that comes down and gets right on the top of the shock absorber. You can tip it at an angle and you can also put it 90 degrees like that. So if you put it 90 degrees, you can hold on while you put the nut on. If you need extra torque, you can just add another extension to hold that. So now, if you have lots of room, you just start the nut, get your ratcheting box here, set the ratcheting box in, and then come in and hold this. You either hold it, probably hold it off like this, because you're going to need to get some leverage on it. See, now by holding onto that rod, you can just... And I tell you, it's that nylock nut that makes this a pain. And you have to have some way to hold on to that shaft. And, and if you try to hold it like that, you're not going to be able to hold it by hand. So you can put a ratchet wrench on the top here to get some leverage if you have to bring this in straight. But a lot of times, you can bring this in either all the way over to the side like that or even at an angle. And you can hold it like this at an angle. If you have a clearance problem, maybe from this angle you can sit a little bit better. Or turn it 90 degrees like that. So you can understand now that this is a standalone tool that can be used with all the Bilstein shocks, both front and rear, as a convenient way to grab the top of the shaft of the shock and use it with any different angles and even add a ratchet to the top to give you more torque. That was the first phase of this tool. Now enter the next phase because with that 380 SL that I showed you earlier, I don't have any room to get this in there. I might be able to get it in like that, but boy, it gets really tough. So enter the custom socket I made. And the shaft goes right down through that. You put that right on the end there, slide the socket down, just like I dreamed about, and then using a 19 millimeter, that's a 19 millimeter nut. If you do have a 19 millimeter ratcheting box, you can slide that on over. Of course, when using the socket, you will need to get another ratchet wrench or a breaker bar, 3 8 drive, to hold that. Now watch this. In goes the nut. Look at how fast. I can get that nut down. You can see how many turns that nut takes before it will go down and bottom out on the shaft. So you literally wear yourself out trying to do this with an open end wrench and hold on to the other end with some sort of vice grips or other type of tool. There it is. All right, look at how long that took. Then you just remove that, move that, and the nut's all the way down. And of course, Taking it off is in the reverse direction. Keep an eye on my website. I'll put some links uh, below this video that will show you our current offerings and our current sale items, as well as any specials that I'm running on Bilstein shock absorbers and this tool right here. I'm over here fighting the original nut. <laughs> the one that's not a nylock and it's coming off harder than the nylock because somebody used an impact. Please don't use an impact when you put these nuts on.
you're going to drive them down hard because of the fine thread. It damages the thread, makes it very hard to get them off. In some cases, you'll strip the bolts underneath these rear shocks or even break them off. So please, no impacts on insulation here. But you can use a ratcheting box. I'm going to see if I can get this nut the rest of the way off. And I'm going to use this and just hold this like this, okay? Oh, man, look at that. See that? So if I need extra leverage, I'm just going to get another extension. And you can put the extension, any 3 8 extension, on to the custom tool. Now we're going to try to get it off. Look at that. Can you believe that? I'll get the nut down as far as I can by hand. The reason for that is you want the flat part of that shaft showing so you can get the tool on there to hold it. So I'll spin the nut down as far as I can by hand. If you do have my custom socket for installing Bilstein shocks, then this is what you want to do. You want to slide that on over the shaft. I'm going to add an extension just to give me more clearance. And I'm going to put that right on the top of the shock. I'm going to drop the socket down there. Then I'm going to take a 19 millimeter, because that top nut is 19 millimeter. And I'm going to put that on top of the socket and then I'm going to hold it right here. Now, isn't that slick? This is what I dreamed about 20 years ago. <laughs> Man, look at how much you have to turn this sucker to get it all the way down. So imagine trying to do that with an open end. And so I'm going to go all the way down until it just bottoms out, and then that's when I stop. You don't torque it tight there, you're going to damage the threads because you've bottomed out on the shaft. You just want to have it tight. It's not going to come loose because you are installing a nylock nut on here. So please do not over torque that nut. Now I can bring you over to a W123 chassis where interference is not a problem. The tops of these shocks are wide open and easy to get on. You can use my shaft by itself to hold on to the top of that shock. Just add an extension if you need more leverage. And then I prefer a ratcheting box, but if you don't have a ratcheting box, you know, it's going to take a little time, but you can sit here with an open end wrench and take it off. Or if you have a ratcheting box, it's going to be a little bit easier. to hold the top of that shock. But if you want to do it with a little more flair, you can get my entire tool with the socket and <laughs> drop this on here like this, drop the socket down and hold this. And just spin it off like that. So I hope that helps you understand when this particular tool will be needed and when it might not be needed. But in any case, I found it's pretty cool to use on all shocks on all Mercedes because you have to turn that stupid nut a hundred times to get it on or off.